بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Then Allah Azza wa Jal turns the speech in a different way by giving an oath فَلَا أُقُسِمُ بِالشَّفَقَ وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقَ وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا اتَّسَقَ لَتَرْكَبُنَّ طَبَقًا عَنْ طَبَقَ So I swear by the twilight glow. Again, the, the uh, scene in these verses is a very calm you know, the, the, the time of, of sunset is a very calm time, right? When the day is ending and the sun is setting and you see that twilight glow, everything is calm and relaxed. Allah Azza wa is describing. And here, there is a, a sense of progression. Look, Allah Azza wa is first swearing by the shafaq. The twilight glow, right? The, the person feels the sense of departure, of end. Just like the day ends by the sun setting, life ends with us dying. And then another feeling or emotion that is hitting in this verse is that you don't know what, it, what to expect in the darkness of the night after the sun sets. Likewise, you don't know what to expect after your life ends and you go into that hole and start the journey of the hereafter. So after that twilight, Indicating the end of the day, Allah talks about the night, which comes immediately after the sun sets. And by the night, and what? It en envelops. It envelops everything. Subhanallah. Once that night, as described in another verse, like a cover that covers everything, Remember when we, when we spoke about that in, in Surah Amma? Allah Azza wa Jal uh, speaks about another uh, cosmic sign that only happens after the advent of the night, which is the moon. And by the moon, when it becomes full. Again, it's a calm, relaxed uh, scene being described in these verses. Just like the first verses of the splitting of the sky and the opening of the earth was described in a very calm manner, right? And the calmness in that was given by the description of the, set, the heavens and the earth being submissive, attentive and listening to Allah Azza wa Jal and responsive. To his command subhanahu wa ta'ala now Allah is swearing is swearing that something is going to happen I swear and then you expect something what is the thing that Allah Azza wa is swearing will happen that you will surely experience state after state various stages in life just like the progression of the twilight and then the night and then the moon. You will go through phases in progression. You will be in the womb of your mother and then come out and then start suckling and then start eating and then start walking and then start talking and then grow up and then until you end the cycle by meeting your Lord, 
and meeting your record of, uh, of deeds. فَمَا لَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ A question. Objecting to the denial and disbelief of those who disbelieved and denied the messenger, the message of Muhammad sallallahu So what is the matter with them that they do not believe? Why? What's making them, what's preventing them from believing? in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the creator Allah azza wa jal who is in control of the heavens and earth that will split and the day and the night and the sun and the moon subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are evident signs before them proven the existence of a creator who is able to create لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ The creation of the heavens and the earth is more, is greater than creating mankind. So why is it that you don't believe though you see these signs before your own eyes and it is something that is renewed and you're reminded with it Day in and day out, night in and night out. So why is it that you don't believe? فَمَا لَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ وَإِذَا قُرِئَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقُرْآنُ لَا يَسْجُدُونَ And when the Qur'an is recited to them, they do not prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, subhanallah, now Abu Huraira, uh, and this is in Sahih Muslim, said that when the Prophet وسلم, recited this in, in the prayer, he prostrated and we prostrated with him. One thing here about why don't they prostrate to Allah? In Surah Al-Najm, Allah concludes the Surah with sujood. فَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ وَعْبُدُوا So prostrate to Allah and worship Him. Or and worship. The narration said, every single person that was present from Quraysh immediately went down in prostration. The... the uh, impact of the Qur'an on the heart is amazing. Notice how these disbelievers prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal as a result of the power of the Qur'an, the words of Allah Azza wa Jal and its impact on their hearts. Allah Azza wa Jal is asking them here and as a way of rebucking them, why don't they believe and why don't they prostrate? Why don't they? What's preventing them from believing and prostrating though they see all of this in front of them? They see what is enough for them to believe and therefore prostrate to the, crea to the creator of these signs uh, and human beings. And yet they insist to remain stubborn and deny. But rather those who have disbelieved, deny. Bel means but rather. Meaning, the only reason, the only thing that prevented them from believing and prostrating to Allah Azza wa Jal, though enough signs were presented to them, to make them believe and prostrate to Allah Azza wa Jal. Enough evidence was given to them, proven the truthfulness of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yet these disbelievers continued to disbelieve because of their stubbornness 
and envy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it is their perpetual nature that they're liars and deniers. Wallahu a'lamu bima yu'um. And Allah is most knowing of what they hide within themselves. Allah Azza wa Jal knows what they hide, the evil they hide, the envy against Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they have, and they harbor in their hearts. Allah Azza wa Jal is all knowing and aware of that. فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ So give them tidings of painful punishment. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds, for them is a reward uninterrupted, never-ending. So Allah Azza wa Jal, after giving this evil tidings to the disbelievers of punishment, He ignores them and talks about the believers. Except those who believe and do righteous deeds. The speech is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here to give the evil news to the disbelievers and the exception to the believers who act righteously that their reward and that endless bliss will be never ending. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst the believers who act righteously and to make our final eternal abode, Al-Jannah, Allahumma Ameen. And with this we conclude Surah Al-Inshiqaq. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.